A warm welcome to your body. Thursday, March 24. The island's manufacturers warned that a 20% tax on sweetened beverages will be a big blow to the sector. Effective April 1, the excise tax on sweetened drinks will increase from 10 to 20%. And according to the Barbados Manufacturers Association, the tax will force local manufacturers to divert critical investments from developing new products and creating new jobs. It also warned that the tax site will make local products more expensive. The association is also concerned about a proposed salt tax that is likely to be implemented from October. The manufacturing body made clear it was in full support of the national fight against the high incidence of non-communicable diseases and suggested this could be achieved without such harsh measures. It called for government to step up collaboration with the association and the business sector to introduce meaningful and proven solutions to fighting NCDs and obesity. The Barbados Fire Service has embarked on a series of familiarization and training exercises as it seeks to ensure fire officers are fully prepared to safely execute cave rescues when necessary. Noting that hikers and adventure seekers explore caves and gullies across the island almost daily, Chief Fire Officer Errol Maynard said it's necessary for officers to become familiar with those spaces. We recognize over the last couple of weeks or months that per persons are in these caves, but we as a department really don't know the terrain and the outlay of these caves. If something happens, we still have to be the ones to go and rescue them. So we believe it is, it is, it is timely that we get familiar, familiar with these caves to ensure that if something happens, we don't only have to take an additional civilian there to guide us, but we will already have an idea of what the cave looks like and also these gullies because it is important that we be proactive in saving lives. At the end of the day, we don't only want to save the life, but we want that, that your quality of life after the rescue is just as good as it was before or even better. 18 members of the Barbados Fire Service, accompanied by devoted cave explorer and hiker, who is also the technical advisor to the Barbados Water Authority, Dr. John Wanza, toward the Cove's Cave in Watt Springs, St. Thomas today. The move comes just under a month after 17-year-old Shaden Padmore was rescued from the same location by members of the Barbados Fire Service. Ardent Cave Explorer Dr. Wanza urged cave explorers to exercise caution. Caves also have branches. Luckily, the Cove's Cave has one tributary right at the, close to the entrance of the cave on the right side there's a tributary which is a dead end but that tributary has bats and you find hydrogen sulfide gases if you go through there and so you could get suffocated from the gases that are in the cave additionally anytime you go into a cave the, it is very rare that the cave is dry, so you need to have waterproof lights so that if it, they get submerged in the water, you will still be in a position to still have light. Most cavers, especially if they are exploring for the first time, use a rope. So when they go along, there is a rope tied to the beginning and they can use it to come back so that if they branch off into another stream, they know exactly which one they have to come back to. And you have to keep constant contact with the group. And now for today's COVID-19 update. There were 110 new cases of the virus, 46 males and 64 females, recorded on Wednesday from the 723 tests conducted by the Besta Santos Public Health Laboratory. Of the positive cases, 20 persons were under the age of 18 and 90 were 18 years and older. The number of people in isolation facilities was 46, while 856 were in home isolation. The death toll stands at 329. There's regional and international news after this short break. More oxygen means more energy, means more adventure. Pure Oxygen, natural spring water infused with more oxygen to improve your energy, immunity and performance. The next generation of hydration. Pure Oxygen, nature's ultimate water.
being cool is a refreshing juice drink that contains 100% vitamin C that you can enjoy any time of the day. It has a refreshingly awesome range of Caribbean flavors. Moby, orange, fruit punch, pineapple, sorrel, and pineapple coconut. Suitable for any occasion. Caribbean cool. To regional happenings in Jamaica, debate is continuing about the public's response to the royal visit by the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge. Two noted figures suggest the reaction of Jamaicans show the country is still pro-colonial, and this is evidence that Jamaicans don't fully understand their history. More on this report from Sandy Williams of Television Jamaica. Director of Center for Reparation Research, Professor Vereen Shepherd, is not particularly fond of the royal tour. She argues that it signifies a sad day in Jamaican history and that Jamaica is still a colonial space. Images have been circulating in the media showing snippets of Prince Williams and his wife Kate visiting several places, including Culture Yard in Trenchtown, the Shortwood Practicing Primary and Junior High School, and the Shortwood Teachers College. Professor Shepard says the depiction in some of the images is disappointing. When our little ones who were trying to educate away from a colonial education would stand and greet people with a flag of a country that is not. That's not our flag. Why weren't they giving Jamaican flags if they had to wave a flag? Our attitudes have shown, for, uh, many of our attitudes are pro-colonial. And therefore, I think it's in keeping with that, that uh, members of the royal family feel comfortable coming to Jamaica because they, they realize that for the most part, they'll get a welcome. Some citizens have expressed that they have no issue with the tour and even questioned the demand for reparative justice. I feel really good about it because um, Jamaica as a country was brought um, about through the English, that's entries were an English-speaking country, so it's not a bad thing. I, it's, it's neither here nor there for me. We talk about rep, re, repatriation and, um, and the British owes us. I don't know how somebody should, should can be owing you after 60 years. And, and for us to be sitting down and talking about repatriation is nonsense. On the international front, the NATO Secretary General says the Western Military Alliance has agreed to provide Ukraine with equipment to protect itself against chemical, biological and nuclear threats from Russia. Speaking at the emergency NATO summit in Brussels on the war in Ukraine, he said the package includes medical support and training for contamination and crisis management. Facing its biggest challenge for decades, the NATO headquarters in Brussels is working round the clock. NATO defence ministers met to discuss sending further weapons and support to Ukraine and long-term plans to place permanent NATO forces in Eastern Europe. But that's where solidarity stops. We have a responsibility to ensure that this uh, conflict, this war, doesn't escalate beyond Ukraine. We see death, we see destruction, we see human suffering in Ukraine, but this can become even worse if NATO uh, took actions that actually turned it in, in, this into a full-fledged war between uh, NATO and, uh, and Russia. For the Ukrainian Defence Minister, Oletsky Reznikov, who joined the meeting remotely, the response is insufficient. He said his country needs less bureaucracy and more military aid. But defence analysts like Bruno Lett say NATO's a defensive alliance and there's no political unity to go further. I think that we are heading towards an era of permanent instability. Uh, NATO and Russia will head for a standoff in the years to come. Uh, the risk here is that we see the geography of Eastern Europe changing dramatically. Uh, we have the war in Ukraine. Uh, there's a risk that Russia might also attack other countries like Moldova. Uh, we see that Belarus is no longer a neutral country. Belarus is de, de facto being used for military operations. So this changes uh, the borders of NATO dramatically. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.